Morning, everyone. So yesterday was a busy day at the church, and one of the events was our community outreach. And uh, I do want to thank uh, Alice there in the back. She's hi, Alice. Um, she she's the one that packaged 400 packages together to be distributed. So we really appreciate the help that Alice did. We had uh, Sue Ellen and Rolf come out. They're fairly new to the congregation. Wonderful couple. Get to know them. And uh, we also had Lewis and the pastor, and Diane and myself, and we distribute the 400 out here. Good time, the coffee afterwards was great also, the community, so next time we do it, come on out. That's actually a good, good activity. The neighborhood, they appreciate it. One guy says, you know, what church is that from? And I said, well, it's the Lutheran church. And, and he says, well, I'm Catholic. He says, but us Christians gotta stick together. God bless you all. So, <laughs> wonderful times, thank you so much. Good morning, the Lord be with you. Okay, we have a little bit of people here and more people over there. No, that's wonderful. That's good. Okay, we have more here. Over there we don't have. But that's good. It is good to be here in the house of the Lord, to worship Him, to thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins, and through Him we have forgiveness of our sins, of our sins and eternal life. And that's wonder, glory to God. Today we celebrate in the Christian church the third Sunday in Advent. Um, the order of service being printed for these occasions, uh, or you could follow the service on the monitors. Uh, it is with Holy Communion. We invite all members of uh, Lutheran Church Canada and as well those that we are in fellowship to participate in Holy Communion. Those that who are not, they can speak with the elders first or with me first, and, but still they are welcome to come to the altar and receive the blessings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, other announcements before we begin. Uh, we are continue uh, our effort in working with the youth. Yesterday there was a planned meeting at 11, a gathering, but sadly no one came. So please keep the youth in your prayers, parents as well, in order to continue with this e e effort. Matt is working hard for that. And it's wonderful now that we uh, organize the youth in the church and we keep going, keep them in prayers in order that we continue. Uh, we're making activities for them and for, for the church as well. For this week at Faith and Grace, we have ladies Bible study uh, here at Faith, Wednesday at 10 a.m. All the ladies are welcome to participate. We have midweek Advent service at 7 p.m. Uh, uh, again, you are welcome to come and worship our Lord. And at 7.45 and 8 p.m., the choir meet to practice. Um, well, I think that that's it. Um, let's see what we have after that. Let us uh, now continue with the, the third Advent uh, video, Joy.
please rise. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take a moment to share to one another the peace of Christ. 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 You may be seated now. We continue with a God's Kids song. Continue with the message at this moment. Where are the children? Come forward, please. We have one here, another one there, and the rest are all of you. You are children of God as well. Okay, you may be seated here. That's wonderful. There. Hi, how you doing? How are you? Very good. So do you like snow? Yeah. Oh, I like it a little bit. But I don't know why it's snow when I go into Strasroy on, on, on Sunday morning. But anyway, so what to do? So we have to be thankful to God that he gave us a good day every day. Okay. This is a calendar that we, have, we use here at the church. And point all the days, you know. Today is the 11th here. 11th. So soon it's going to be what? Christmas in two weeks, 14 days. That's wonderful. And what do we get in Christmas? Oh, you saw this present. Yes, indeed. And that's we get presents, you know, gift. So are you going to get a gift? Huh? I guess so. Huh? Yeah, you're going to get gifts. I think that everybody here will get gifts, cards or gifts like this or anything else. So because it's an important day. So and what do we celebrate? Can you tell me what do we celebrate? Christmas. Christmas. And what is the important the importance of Christmas? The importance of Christmas is that we celebrate the Christmas Eve. Okay. Okay, that's one part. But you know I have here an important gift that God gave us. God, you know, our Father, okay? Love? Yes, indeed. And that love is shown to this person who came that we celebrate in Christmas. We celebrate the, the birth of Jesus. And that's very important because it's an important gift. So it's good that we receive gifts. And that's... We have to be grateful when we receive gift and thank the Lord for receiving gift. But the most important gift that we have received and that we, that's the reason that we celebrate Christmas is because Jesus came to the world. 
you see kind of a, a gift here. See these ones? Jesus came and he was a baby and he grew up completely and then he spoke God's word and then he went to the cross for our sin and he died for our sins there. And he rose from the dead and he is at the right hand of God interceding for us. So this is the most important gift that we have, that Jesus came and died for our sins. And that's the reason that we celebrate Christmas. Everything about Christmas is about Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. For that, we have that cross over there, you see. A big cross, big cross there. Because we remember that Jesus died for our sins. And when we mess up, when we commit sins, when we don't do the right thing, God forgives our sins. And that's the most important gift that we have, Jesus Christ. So we celebrate Christmas because of Jesus. So repeat after me. Jesus. 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 My Savior. Jesus. Wonderful. So I'm going to invite everybody to pray with me. Repeat after me. So you put your hands like this. Like this. Just like this. Yes, wonderful. And repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. We know that every good gift that we received comes from you. And the greatest gift is eternal life brought down to us through your, through your Son. Father, Father we, thank we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Thanks for coming. So you could return. I think you're going to go to Sunday school downstairs. No idea. Over there. Yes. Follow your teachers there. We continue with the lighting the Advent candle. On this third Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of joy. When Christ comes into our lives, he brings the fullness of joy. He anoints our hearts with the oil of gladness. When Jesus was born, the angel said, that his coming was good news of great joy for all people. Because Christ has come to us, we can live every day in the joy of the Lord. Praise to his name. We sing rejoice, rejoice, believers.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, let the lighting of these candles signify that you are the light that shines in all the darkness of our lives. As we wait, watch, hope, and pray, guide us all to reflect your light and let it shine. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. You may kneel if you, you would like or stand or sit if you prefer to confess our sins to God. We all confess our sins. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declare us to be your children and gather us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may rise. We continue with the entroid. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds, so even to all age, in gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lions shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading this morning is from James chapter 5, verses 7 to 11, an encouragement for Christians to wait for the Lord with patience. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the ground of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus speaks about John the Baptist. Please note that the text for meditation is from verse 11 from this text. When John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word, word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, 
Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight in the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What do you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind. What then do you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then do you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The third Sunday in Advent is a joy-filled Sunday in which we can thank God for his gracious plan for our salvation and for the Holy Spirit who guides our lives of faith and joins us together in the community of the church. We speak the words of the third article of the Apostle Creed with joyful confidence. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. You may be seated.
We begin our meditation in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear believers in Christ, as I said, our meditation for this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 11. I will repeat this verse. Truly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. My friends in Christ, in order to understand this text, for sure we ask the Lord to guide us, and we will meditate it. We, we will meditate first in something that is spoken as well in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 1. Kind of the same theme. At this verse 1, Jesus explains to the apostles what it means to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. It says, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? We would like to reprimand these apostles for, for being so ignorant and insensitive. But Jesus is patient and merciful with them. And his patience and mercy with them comforts us because it gives us good reason to hope that he will be just as patient and merciful with us. Jesus responded to them. In calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So what are we to learn from Jesus' answer here? First of all, we should hear what Jesus does not say. He does not say you should not be striving for greatness. On the contrary, affirms their quest for greatness. Their quest for greatness. Friends, there is nothing wrong with wanting to be great. In fact, I hope that all of us want to be great at our job. I hope that we do not want to be mediocre. There is something wrong with the person who does not want to be great at every vocation in life that they have. So it is not the quest for greatness that is an issue here. It's the definition of greatness that is at issue. So now coming back to our text, what does it mean to be great in the kingdom of heaven? It means quite simply, turning the world upside down. Let us start right here in the church. Greatness in the church does not come from simply holding some office or positions, from getting your name in the bulletin or receiving the gratitude of others for counsel, for elders, or trustees, for choir members, for the organist and pastor, for Sunday school teachers and volunteers, for anyone and every one of us. Greatness is not found in being recognized and honored. Now that we have heard what is greatness in our text today, Jesus calls John the Baptist the greatest of those born to women, the greatest man who ever lived but Jesus also says that as great as John was, he's nothing compared to even the least of those in the kingdom of heaven. 
And while we do not want to let it go to our heads, we can and should rejoice in the wonderful grace that our God has given to us, that we, by faith in the Messiah who comes to us, are members in his kingdom, promoted from dying, condemned sinners into the hairs of heaven, great people of a great and wonderful God. Among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. That is high praise, especially when it comes from Jesus himself. John the Baptist is called the greatest of all mankind. He did not make any great medical or scientific discovery. He did not broker any great peace accords. He was never wealthy nor successful, at least from a human point of view. So, what was it that made John so great? We could say that John was a great man because of his integrity. At the time of our text, John is in prison because he dared to speak out against King Herod after Herod divorced his wife in order to marry his niece, who was already married to his brother. John would speak the truth, even if it meant his own life. Or perhaps we could point to the fact that John was great because he was not caught up in the materialism of the world. He was a man not influenced by the world or the things of the world. In part, this is why the people came to listen to, to John in the wilderness. He was different from, from their teachers or even other prophets of his day. John was a simple man who spoke with a simple authority and with a conviction many had not seen before. But as wonderful as these things may be, they are not, they are not the things that made John a great man. Rather, it was John's call that made him great. It was the position that God had bestowed upon John that made the difference. John was blessed by God in being given the responsibility of being the messenger sent to prepare the way for the Messiah. While all the other prophets would speak of the coming of the Messiah, it was John who could point at Jesus and say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. God had an important task for John, a task which the Holy Spirit enabled John to fulfill faithfully and effectively. He prepared the way for the coming of the Savior, of the Messiah, John the Baptist, the way preparer for the Messiah, was the greatest of all men. <clears throat> but Jesus tell us, Jesus tell us that even the least member of the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. Friends in Christ, this greatness is not based on intellectual ability or on athletic. It is not based on the things we accomplish or the money we have. It is not the result of our social status or of some position we hold. True, greatness is not from us. Rather, it comes to us through the grace and blessing we receive from the Savior who comes to redeem and ransom his people. It is really a wonderful miracle when you think about this. We, we who have no right to, to lay any claim to greatness, especially before God himself, can rejoice in the greatness we have through the mercy of God. Through Christ, through Jesus, 
we have received a wonderful promotion from dying sinners to redeemed saints. In Christ, we are ransomed from a miserable existence as a slaves of Satan, so that God is pleased to call us his children. With Paul, we have to admit, I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. And yet God himself declares that he is not ashamed to be called our father. Friends, everything changes for us in the Savior who comes. There are, <clears throat> there are many places in Holy Scriptures where we are warned against thinking too highly of ourselves. But it is also good for us to know and to remember our new positions through the grace and mercy of Christ. We can claim greatness not of ourselves, but through the Savior who died and rose to make us great in his kingdom. We are special people, yes, special to God. You are precious in my sight and honor, and I love you, the Lord declares. Friends, when we are feeling unloved or unimportant, we can remember that we are great in the sight of God. When we start to question our own worth, when issues of self-esteem start to plague us, we can remember how great we are to God. When we feel that we are not as smart as the next person or as attractive or as skilled, we can still remember that we are great as members of God's kingdom. But let us never forget that we are great, not because we are so wonderful in and of ourselves, but because we have a great and wonderful God who redeem us from sin, death, and hell and give us new life as his beloved children. So who is the greatest person who ever lived? <clears throat> Christians, of course, typically think first of Jesus Christ. For there is no one like him. But after him, I think of our Sunday school teachers who every week prepare the children classes to share with us the good news of the Savior. Even John the Baptist would be envious of their faith and confidence in the Savior. I think of the ladies of LWMLC who work hard in sharing the love of the Savior to others. I think of the people who came to decorate the church for Christmas or the choir members, the shamers, and the musicians who sing his praises. I think of all those who bow their heads in prayers of thanksgiving and intercessions, praising God for his goodness and coming before him with the needs of those around them. I think of the workers of the church who keep this church in good shape and running smoothly, or the secretary the church leaders, and others who work in the church behind the scenes. Also, God sees greatness in changing diapers and washing dishes, in mealtime devotions and prayers before bed, in patient interactions and firm discipline. God sees greatness in parents and grandparents who model Christian values and Christian priorities in an ungodly world, in husbands and wives who may argue, but who always forgive and ask for forgiveness, in parents who figure out a way to give God's children a full-time Christian education because no other gift you can give them will pay eternal dividends. And let us be honest, none of those things will get you any award or public recognition. These things do not fit the world's idea of dreaming big and achieving fame and fortune. In fact, some people you know 
will scoff and laugh and tell you that you are doing life wrong. But you will not care because you know that your heavenly Father sees and rewards what is done in secret. Matthew chapter 6, verse 4. That greatness in God's kingdom does not come from being served, but from serving. Not from living life your way, but following in Christ's footsteps. Not from being praised and recognized, but in giving all praise and glory to God. <clears throat> because as just as our Savior achieved greatness for us by serving us with his suffering and death, so our path to greatness in God's kingdom lies in our willingness to serve instead of being served. For us, as for Christ, picking up and carrying the cross of humility and service is the only route that leads to the crown of glory in heaven. God help us all to seek and find true, lasting greatness in God's kingdom. For Jesus' sake, amen. Please rise for prayer. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For all who offer prayers and supplications, that God would hear them on account of his Son, who has enlightened the darkness of our hearts and every corner of creation by his incarnation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all pastors and church workers, that the words they bear would prepare the way of Jesus' second advent and be received by all who hear them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the homes of our land, that God will grant safety and security to all families, and that the faith would be delivered from one generation to the next. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all in authority, that they would be given wisdom and insight until the day when Christ comes again in glory to usher in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sake and grieving, and for all others who are going through difficult times in body and mind, especially we remember Mary, Barb and Stu, for William, for Lloyd and Elsie, for Shirley and Douglas, for Bill and Vicky, for Patricia, for Dorothy, for Melissa, for Trevor, for Remy, for Rebecca, for Gerda, for Bill, for Sandra, for Sarah, for Karen, for Kat Kathleen, for Shirley, for Nancy, for Mark, for Sarah, for Alice, for Marcia, for Janice, for Al, for Ed and Pam, for Judy, for Alan, for Rachel and her children, for Jason, for Barbara, for Walter and Donna, for Stan, for Becky, for Anna, for Delbert, for Dolores, for Grace, for Nancy and Pastor Ron. We pray also for those who are in our hearts and minds. That as the day draws near, when blind eyes see, deaf ears hear, lame legs leap, and mute tongues sing for joy. God will grant them healing according to his gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the families of our congregations, especially we pray this week for Chris, Rebecca, Aiden, and Abigail, for Niels, for Alice, for Dan, for Rosemary, and Andrew that they all be united in love, forgiveness, peace, and mutual respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who celebrate their birthdays this week, especially for Hannah, for Brad, for Jeremy, for Michael, 
for Beth, for Dave, for Alisa, for Alexander, for Riano, and Brian. That God sustain each of them in any circumstance of their life and keep their faith in Christ till the end. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are merry and celebrate their wedding anniversary this week, we remember Scott and Lindsay, that our Lord of mercy strength, strength daily their love of each other and help them to overcome any problems that arise in their midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for its unity, and that she will continue to be a place where the gospel is rightly proclaimed and the sacraments correctly administered, for the life and salvation of God's people, and that she might be an instrument of God's mercy to her neighbors and others may join us according to your will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Athena, who was born on, Mo on Monday, December 5th, and also for her parents, Nikki and Darcy. We thank you, Lord, for her birth, as you have added her to the human family, so also unite her to your holy church, through the waters of holy baptism, by the gracious working of your Holy Spirit. Help her to grow in your nurture and admonition that she may bring glory to you and serve others in your name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the people of Ukraine and other nations which are suffering because of war and social unrest, we pray for peace in the lying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For faith and joy to receive the Lord's Supper worthily this day, as Christ comes as a foretaste of the Lamb's marriage feast, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God, your love invites us to rejoice in your goodness in every circumstance of life. Teach us the joy that comes from knowing your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and eagerly expecting his gracious visitation through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue collecting the offering, bringing the, the offering, and we sing the, a hymn, 10,000 Reasons. Bless our Lord. Bless our Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawn. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. You're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand 
thousand reasons for my heart to find. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever more oh bless all oh my soul soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul worship your holy name so worship your holy Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy, you send your servant John the Baptist to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, come, Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
and with great joy.
Please rise. We continue with the non dimittis. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Advent. So God bless you. Go out and serve the Lord. Take care.